In this video, we're going to discuss how a circular economy is dependent on what we call an axis economy. The musician David Bowie famously said many, many years ago that in the future, music is going to be like water. It will be like a tap you can open and music will flow out. What he was really predicting was the business models of companies like Spotify today, which is an access economy type of business model, where you pay for the access to the music streamed through your computer or other device, rather than the old model whereby we bought the physical product for ownership. In the same way, we see now the development of different kinds of car sharing uh, business models, where you get access to mobility instead of getting access to a car. We often say that we live in a service economy, and we're probably headed towards an access economy. This is a world where some products, like the car, remain physical, but still become services, whereas other products, like the records, are actually becoming digital, streamed through our devices and through our speakers, and they've become something different than they ordinarily were. I've been to your basement, Lars Jakob, and there's tons of records there, LPs that you have to go into a store, buy, uh, use, and you have not thrown them away, but still you have the physical record at, at, at your home. David Bowie had a vision of a music industry without the records of LPs that you have still in your basement. He had a vision of an access economy that we will argue is a lot more circular than the old-fashioned music industry. From a sustainability point of view, what is interesting about the access economy is that it implies a form of dematerialization, that physical things are turning into digital solutions. Think about an office, for instance. If you go back not many years, it would have a printer and a fax and many different devices. Today, most of those devices are either inside our laptops or inside our cell phones. And that means that we can get the same services done with less physical materials. So a fundamental aspect of the circular economy and also then the circular business model is to give people access, access to products as services. This really has two dimensions. On the one hand, it implies the transformation of the product into a service, whether that means that it becomes non-physical or not. And on the other hand, it typically implies some change in the logic of how or who owns the product. So from an ownership-based model to an access-based model. Again, this is an innovation challenge for many managers. Look at light, for instance. We used to buy light bulbs that lasted for, I don't know how long, maybe a year or two. Uh, and then the LED lamp came along, uh, which lasts for perhaps 10 to 20 years. And what is Philips, for instance, supposed to do then to earn money? This has changed the business model of Philips and comparable companies. If you go to Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, for instance, Philips has sold light as a service to this airport. That means that the airport never owns the lights or the light bulbs. Uh, instead, Philips retains the ownership and they really sell the guarantee that there will be light in all the rooms at any given time. So thereby, the ownership structure has changed and also, the light bulb has really changed from a product to a service from the point of view of the airport. A light bulb company then can add different services to this product. Did you know that, uh, how much is it? It's like 50 to 60% of all offices in, in Europe is not used in regular office hours? So when Philips then can add sensors to a light bulb, so it can tell if there's people in the room, uh, where the people are moving and so on, this really opens for two interesting things. First, it means that Philips can now tell if there are people in the room and turn the light on and off. Also, they can sell additional kinds of services about the movements of people, for instance, in the airport. This again means that owners of office buildings or airports or whatever, they can use these resources much better. So through services, they can achieve a more circular business model. This is often referred to as structural waste, the excess capacity in all the buildings and cars that we have. And these kinds of technologies can allow for a higher resource utilization. In that way, the access economy is truly a form of circular economy in that it helps us to get higher resource efficiency. Again, as a manager then, 
you need to redesign and rethink the way that you create value, the way you deliver it, and the way you capture it. The capturing logic then turns from selling one product to selling a service, perhaps as a subscription. To deliver these services, then you need different kinds of resources, a different kinds of organization that can offer, for instance, uh, service reparation uh, and, and so on, and also get access to data and use this data uh, to, to sell more services. Access economic business models are being introduced in all sorts of different industries. You can buy carpets as a service, you can buy airplane engines as services, and so on and so on. This is one of the big business model transformations of our time, the transformation of products into services. So moving then towards, hopefully, a more sustainable future, we need sustainable business model innovations in which products are offered to people as services, where people all around the world get access to the things they need in their lives, and they don't have to own it. I don't have to own my own drill. I can rent that drill, lease that drill, or have a subscription on different kinds of equipment that I need in my home. In this way, we can solve all the problems that customers have using less things, owning less stuff, thereby reducing our overall footprint on society and the environment.